something happened. Just want gambling, get just a video. Anyway, this game is called Mule, and it, apparently it was very popular in, in the Commodore days, and I never played it, never seen it before. But now, there's a board game, ah, volume. There's a board game based on this game, which actually is, was based on a board game from before. Well, it wasn't based on a board game, but they wanted to make a board game, but they couldn't, so they made a video game instead, and it's like a board game, and yeah, back and forth. Anyway, Mule the board game. Can it stand up to this grand, uh, big game called Mule? I don't know. Well, the board game is it good anyway. Let's find out. Hello. Well, here's the board game anyway. Mule, M-U-L-E. Multi-use labor equipment. It looks like a mule, but it doesn't handle like a mule. I don't think they can multiply anyway. So, in this game we have uh, arrived at the planet Irata, which is Atari backwards. And we each player has their own home things, uh, homestead to think about. And while this, in the middle here, everyone has access to. And this will show you the prices of the economy and such, and uh, yeah. But how does the game work, and what are we going to do in this game? In order to win the game, you need to have money. And money is the determining factor of this game. But to get more money, you need to get minerals, such as smith ore or crystite, which is the most valuable things in this system here. But you can also get money on food and energy. Though, food is what you use for your actions, and energy is what you use to keep your mules active. So you can go, you can place tiles around your homestead, and add mules to it. I don't know if you see the mule here, you can zoom in maybe. And they will try to harvest whatever you have on the, the in front, away from you. Uh, so, some mules will harvest energy, and some will harvest food, and some will harvest smith ore and crystite. But the crystite is marked with a question mark. Hmm. So first, after you spend your energy to keep it active, then you will find out, okay, did we manage to find any crystite here? Yeah, we did this in this case, and not in this case. So, we got one crystite. That wasn't that good. But luckily, you can spend food to go on an expedition and just look. Aha! And then five seconds later, you've forgotten it. Yay! Everything you need to know is on this card here. So first, expansion. Take a tile from the middle and add it to any corresponding color. So let's say I add it here. Then we have the development phase. And I can do uh, three rounds of actions, either two cheap ones per round or one expensive one. To do an action, you have to pay with food. And the food cost is on this here. So you see, one food, two food, two food, two food, and so forth. So let's say I buy, I buy and refit a mule on a blue. So two food it cost me. And I can buy a mule and put it here. And of course you have to pay the cost for the mule according to the market. So you can refit, which means to turn around and try to get other resources, or just look at lands and so forth. After all these are done, all players move to the next uh, turn order. So we have usage and spoilage, production, pricing and market. So this is the global market on the planet Iwata. Here we have the prices for the smith ore and crystite and food and energy. And here we have the available resources. So, the availability of the resources is finite. If it's empty here, and no player has filled it up or sold anything, it is empty. The, there is no, nothing in the game that refills this, uh, this market in any way. So, if no player will sell their stuff, well, there's no way to buy it. Also, if you're the richest player, you are able to buy last. So, even though you can afford everything here, if the players in front of you buy before you, well, that's too bad for you. And maybe you're stuck. So luckily, one time per game, you can get help from your whole planet and get more energy or food, but only one time. Other than that, you have everything here is controlled by the player actions and the combined economy of the players. And I like it about this game. This variable variability here is all based on your actions and nothing else. Well, not entirely true though, you have some randomness. The game comes with two modes. You have the regular mode, and every player starts with their own alien. But the aliens don't have any special powers or abilities, and everyone plays equal. And there is fewer rules to think about. 
Then you have the tournament rules, and every player gets their own special power according to the alien they have. Two of the aliens are actually weaker and stronger than the other ones. So this just compensates for the new new players or, or more experienced players in this game. Because yeah, it's if you are experienced against the three newbies, maybe you should start with less money. So just pick the alien that does it. That's it. So I like it. Uh, so the, the differences between the tournament and the regular rules are one more round to play, but there isn't really that much difference between the tournament and the regular rules, except for the auction of the tiles, the, the optional options, auctions of the tiles here, and some minor differences. So I think w once you get the game explained, there is very little difference between the tournament rules and the regular rules, and I don't see the point of having the regular rules because it's so minor differences. And I like it better with the tournament rules. But this is not the randomness factor in the game. No, events will happen to set the prizes and other stuff. So the game is played on a set number of rounds, and each round is uh, displayed by one of the cards. Uh, so these cards are drawn randomly from the beginning of the game, and the excess cards are returned to the box, and you don't look at them. So you don't know what's in here, except for the last card, which is the game end. And still, you don't know the game end card either, because this, these cards set the price for Crystite. So, you don't know if Crystite is going to be worth anything in the last round. Maybe it's 4 or 10 in the last round, so it's very hard to say. But anyway, when you draw a card... Ah, pirate ship! Hooray! And I just made... 12 crystal this round. Well, the pirates steal them all. So, these events are very hard to to be prepared for. So, for instance, um, one card says the player who has the, with the most money uh, loses a mule. Okay, well, that's kind of fair maybe to catch up mechanism. But then the next card says the, per, uh, the player on the second space or second most money loses a mule. What? How can you prepare for that? Also, what if the same player in the one round is the first and loses a mule, and the next round is the second place and loses a mule? <laughs> there, he lost two mules and the other person never did, and maybe not even in the deck, so very random. Also, there's one more thing that happens, the lucky and unlucky events. At the end of each round, the most rich player gets a lucky card. Hooray! Lucky event. Oh, your off-wall investment in artificial dumbness finally paid off. You collected dividends. But I can't use it for myself. Nope. I have to give it away to another player. So I'm gonna choose the one with the least money or the one who benefits the least of this card because it says here if you have this, this, this many lands you get 7, if you have 5 plus you get 15. So I'm gonna give it to you because you don't have the least amount of money but you, have, you will benefit the least of it. But the one gaining my card, that person will draw a card and decide who gets it and probably Oh, I got it back. I will lose $15. Hooray! So, I don't know. It is a catch up like mechanism. I'm not sure if I like it. It's because there's no guarantees, and when I'm being nice to someone else, I can't expect them to be nice back because I'm in the lead. But uh, I'm not, I don't know. It seems it's fun, but uh, I'm not sure. I like in this game where you otherwise have a lot of control except for the events that happen. So, the game is solid, except it's random. Well, all in all, I like Mule. It is a nice game. It's an enjoyable game, and I like everything in the market thing and what you can do in home. And the only thing is, is the random things that happen. And, well, all in all, I don't mind that at all, because the total experience of the game is fun. So, this is a nice recommendation from me. Also, I played it with people who have played the Commodore game, and they say the resemblance is almost... Uh, it's uncanny, the resemblance of the game. So, I don't have a doubt that the, the video game actually was a board game-ish thought that became a video game that later became a board game, because they, they just think it is a very good representation of the video game. And the moment we play this game, we go, oh, I have to go home and play the original, because this was just the same experience. So, you have to take their word on it, not mine. Because, But anyway, I enjoyed this game, and I have no experience with the computer game. So, even though the randomness, um, it's the total experience is, is, is good. Uh, also, um, the gameplay should take less than 90 minutes with four players, and maybe two hours if you play the full tournament rules. 
But uh, it is no problem for me to recommend this game, even though it has the strange randomness to it. Anyway, thanks for watching this episode. I hope to see you again in the next one. See ya! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com.